think Eagles is is the thing on everybody's yeah, mind right I now. Think yeah, that's pressing, especially with uh, them picking up Sproles. Right, exactly. And you know, we were talking about it before we came on air. How dynamic. Darren Sproles could possibly be for this Eagles team from a personal standpoint. I mean, I'm excited. I think it's a, a good weapon that Chip Kelly can utilize. I think he proved last year how creative he is offensively when he gets new toys to uh, to play with. So I'm excited to get Darren Sproles. They only gave up a fifth-round pick to acquire him. I mean, any player you were going to draft in the fifth round probably wasn't going to produce as much as Darren Sproles will for this team. So very, very uh, excited to see the Eagles making a move like that. That is true. I think looking at the Eagles' history, when they've wanted a guy, they've found a way to get him. Get now, whether or not we've agreed with the pick is one thing, but when they've needed to move up in the draft to go and get a guy, they've been able to pull it off. I think Howie Roseman's a very creative GM. I think the same about Chip Kelly in terms of the way he evaluates players. So I think if there's a guy that they feel like they have to get, they'll find a way to move from that early 20 pick and they'll get him. As far as what they've done so far in free agency. All the players they have acquired to a degree I like, I agree with. You know, you spoke about the fact that there are other safeties who might be on paper better than Malcolm Jenkins. But one thing I like about this group of players, when you look at them from top to bottom, they've all come from winning systems. And I think yeah. sometimes that's overlooked. You know, Jairus Bird's a great player. TJ Ward's a great player. But they played for the Bills and the Browns, respectively. You know, they came from yeah. losing. For who and who? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And when we look back at you know, the one that I always think of, it's a Namdi Asamoah signing. Asamoah yes. looked great, but he came from a horrible team. I remember team. when that happened and everybody was so excited and then right. it just wound up. Just Sometimes I think you can't devalue what it means to come from a winning organization because you bring that culture to the Eagles. And I think that's one of their focuses this year when you look at the group of players they brought in. They've, they've addressed special teams, which I like. The only thing I guess that I dislike is the fact that they didn't go and get Marcus Ware when he was there. I like him. I think he still has a lot left in the tank. I'll agree with the money the money point there. I, I wouldn't have priced myself out like that on DeMarcus Ware, but I think he has a lot left in the tank. I think the fact that Dallas would switch their defense knowing that he's one of the premier 3-4 defenders in the league, that baffled me that they would switch to a 4-3 and hold on to him last year. They honestly could have traded him last year. Go ahead and continue, boys. You guys got to, they got into like a heated argument while we were at break. I can't disagree with the points about Namdi because I do think that situation was different than most situations. But I think when you look at a player coming from a losing system, and what I like so much about this group is the fact that you come with a different attitude and a different approach to the game because you know what it takes to reach the pinnacle of your sport. Like I feel like with Namdi and any player that comes from a losing situation, you might get to a winning team and then players are looking to you to set the tone because of how great of a player you are, but you don't really know how to set the tone in a locker room that's expecting great things. You know, Namdi never played with those sort of expectations in Oakland. And yes, I agree. Because it's Oakland. Right, exactly. <laughs> I agree. Yes, good Sorry. players good players around Namdi would have probably helped him even more. But at the same time, when you're the one lone great player in a bad defense, a lot of times offenses don't even go at you. I feel like the biggest thing with Namdi was that he was never thrown at. We always heard that, like, quarterbacks don't throw Namdi's way. Well, maybe they didn't throw his way because the whole rest of the team was so bad that it was easy to pick on them. You know, so I think it can get a little bit... I think you can come into some gray area there, but I just... Not to take anything away from previous players, but I like the fact that Chip Kelly sees where his team is headed and he's finding players who have already been there, have already experienced winning. You know, they picked up a player from the Texans, who with the exceptions of this past year, yeah. have been playing well. They got someone from Seattle, two players from the Saints. You know, teams that have been very good NFL franchises. Yeah. Like, possibly do you think that a lot of, of Nick Foles' success was based on the fact that he did have Vic kind of breathing down his neck. And he had to perform. Because if he didn't perform, Mike Vic could step right back into that position and take, take it away from him. But if Vic is out of the picture and all he has is a back off is Matt Barkley, do you really think he's going to go ahead and push himself as hard? Do you think he's going to have to try as hard or, or feel like he needs to prove himself as much? Or do you think that maybe this will be the year that he does have to prove himself? I think we're going to find that out. I mean, when I look at Nick Foles, I see a guy who's pretty poised. And I don't know that he thought last season that Vic was going to step back in at any time. I, I think he had some good games and was very confident in the fact that he was playing well and was going to be in as long as they won. And at the end of the day, because of the fact that the Eagles were winning, 
there was no way you could take Foles out. Whether he was, yeah. even if he had not played the way he played and just was playing adequately and we kept winning, I feel like Chip Kelly would have stuck with Foles regardless. As far as this upcoming season, I think, like I said, best bet is that Vic won't be back. And I think Barkley, I mean, not Barkley, excuse me, Foles, I think will continue to play well. I, I don't think that he motivated himself through Vic. Barkley, you know, hopefully he plays a little bit better. Because right now you don't have another quarterback on the roster. So Barkley could end up being number two. But, uh, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Now, do you think Nick Foles is going to have a season like that? or And if he's not that good, what are they going to do? Because you have Mike Vick, and that is still kind of, you know, in the gray area. We don't know exactly what's going on with him. And then there's Barkley. Yeah. If you want to even consider Barkley <laughs> an option. I, I think it all rides on Foles, to be honest. When I, I was driving here thinking about it today, everything is in place. Everything is pretty much in place. They they added a safety in Malcolm Jenkins. Now, opinions are split on Jenkins, but, but they, they did add a safety. Like they wanted, right, exactly. So. But yeah. right now, everything with the exception of a pass rusher, which I think they're going to now address in the draft, is there. So there's really no excuse for the Eagles to have a bad season unless Foles isn't what he looked like he was a year ago. And with teams now having a full season, almost a full season worth of tape, mm -hmm. being able to game plan for him and only him, it'll be interesting to see. I, as far as Vic goes, originally I thought to myself, okay, Vic, if he comes back as a backup, wouldn't be so bad. Have an experienced guy once again behind Foles. But for a confidence boost for Nick Foles. I think it might be best to let Vic just go. And I do think he's going to go sign somewhere else. But it might be best to let him go so Nick's not looking over his shoulder. He knows it's his job, his opportunity. And listen, there's no reason to doubt him. He hasn't really shown us anything bad. I know a lot of people still aren't sold 100%, but you know, we can only go by what we've seen. And it's been mostly good things so far. Yeah.